minimax approximation is a particular method for approximating functions. Let's say we're given a function f of x over the real interval from a to b. We want to find an approximation to this function, p of x. I've used p because usually the approximation is a polynomial. In this case, it's a straight line. Minimax approximation is the process of finding the approximation which minimizes the maximum difference between the function f of x and the approximation p of x across the given interval. This is known as the L-infinity norm or just the infinity norm. It also goes by the names supremum norm, uniform norm, max norm, among others. In this video, I'll stick to calling it the infinity norm. Let's give an example of a minimax approximation problem. Find the best minimax approximation p star in p1 of f of x equals x squared over the interval minus 1 to plus 1. I give this example because it doesn't require calculation, just some thought. P1 is the set of straight lines, so the question is, which straight line minimizes the maximum difference between it and x squared? I'll give you the answer, since this example is just to illustrate what minimax approximation is. P of x equals 1 half is a straight line and the maximum differences occur at x equals minus 1, 0 and plus 1. Here f of x minus p of x is equal to 1 half, minus 1 half and 1 half respectively. We can see this more clearly if we plot f minus p. This curve f of x minus p of x is called the error function e of x. This is an important function in minimax approximation since the maximum of the absolute value of e of x over the interval gives us the infinity norm. Visually, this is the point or points on the curve furthest away from the x-axis, which in this case is one half. I now want to discuss the fact that we have three points on the x-axis where the value of the maximum error is observed. In fact, this is a general point about minimax approximation. For a best minimax approximation from Pn to a continuous function, there will be n plus two points where the maximum error is observed. For a straight line, n is 1, and so you'll have three points at which this occurs. Here I've labelled these Xi0, Xi1, and Xi2. The other thing to notice is that the errors oscillate between negative, when p of x is greater than f of x, and positive, where p of x is less than f of x. That is, p of x crosses f of x between every point at which the maximum error occurs. If we increase the degree of the polynomial, in this case to a fourth order polynomial, the same phenomena occurs. The set of x values xi0 to xi5 is called the alternating set because of the alternating sign of the error function at these points. What we've seen can be summarized by the characterization theorem. This states that if p star in pn is the best minimax approximation from pn to f, a continuous function in the interval a to b, then there exists an alternating set xi0 to xi n plus 1 such that the alternating set are in the interval a to b and are distinct, that is each one is strictly greater than the previous one, at each xi i the maximum of the absolute value of the error function f minus p is achieved and is equal to the infinity norm. This means there aren't any other points in the interval where the error is greater than those at the points in the alternating set. Finally, the sign of the errors oscillate so that the error of xi i plus 1 is the negative of the error of the previous point in the alternating set xi i. So in our previous example, the best minimax approximation p star in p1 of f of x equals x squared over the interval minus 1 to 1, we had an alternating set minus 1, 0 and 1 at which the maximum error was 1 half. We also saw the sign of f minus p, the error function, oscillate. At x equals minus 1, f of x minus p of x is plus 1 half, then minus 1 half at x equals 0, and then plus 1 half again at x equals 1. 
Okay, so we've seen a simple example of minimax approximation and the properties of the best minimax approximation. Now let's look at a more complicated example. Find the best minimax approximation, p star in p2, of f of x equals e to the minus x times sine pi x over the interval 0 to 1. For this, we'll need to use an algorithm called the exchange algorithm. The crucial part of the exchange algorithm comes from the third part of the characterization theorem, the changing sign of the error of the alternating set. Let h be the error at xi0. We know the error at the next point, xi1, will be minus h, and the one after that will be plus h, and so on. Knowing this, and only this, we can actually calculate the polynomial best approximation p star. For p and p2, we have a set of equations, a plus b xi i plus c xi i squared plus minus 1 to the i h equals f of xi i. I've done a bit of a range in from the previous form, but a, b and c are the coefficients of the polynomial p we need to find, and minus 1 to the i will give us the alternating sign of the error h. This is a linear system of n plus 2 equations and n plus 2 unknowns, n referring to the degree of the polynomial. We can therefore solve for a, b, c and h, giving us our polynomial. There's just one problem. We don't actually know the xi values of the alternating set. So we actually start by guessing the n plus 2 values of the alternating set. In this context, we call it the reference. Then we solve the set of equations to give a polynomial approximation. I'll call it P1 because it's our first attempt at finding the best minimax approximation of f of x. We now need some way of changing the reference to find the values that give us the best minimax approximation. To do this, we start by calculating the error function f of x minus p of x. As expected, the values of e of x on the reference alternate between positive and negative h. A quick side note, h is also calculated when we solve for the polynomial, and h can be positive or negative. In the present example, h is negative. From here, we calculate the point at which the maximum error is observed, which can be strictly within the interval where the gradient of e of x is zero, or as is the case here, at the interval boundary. Here, the maximum error is observed at x equals 1. The exchange algorithm says we should now exchange this x value with 1 in our reference. Specifically, we need to make sure that the error alternates in sign, which means exchanging with the nearest point with the same sign of error. The error at x equals 1 is positive, and the nearest point in the reference with a positive error is 0 0.8, so we exchange 0 0.8 with 1. It's this step which gives the one-point exchange algorithm its name. We start with a reference, use the set of simultaneous equations to find our approximation p of x, calculate the error function, then exchange the x value which gives the maximum absolute error with the closest point in the reference of the same error sign. Each time we repeat this process, the reference gets closer and closer to the one which will give us the best minimax approximation. Let's go through more iterations of the exchange algorithm for our example. As we saw previously, in the first iteration, the maximum error occurs at x equals 1 the error having an absolute value of 0 0.25. We replace the closest x value with the same error sign, which is 0 0.8, with a new value of 1, and calculate the new polynomial. This time, the maximum error occurs at x equals 0, and we exchange it with 0 0.2. By the third iteration, we can see a significant improvement in the approximation. The maximum error occurs at 0 0.768 and is negative. So we exchange 0 0.6, which also has a negative error associated with it. In the fourth iteration, the maximum error occurs at 0 0.293 
and it's positive, so we exchange with 0 0.4. Finally, by the fifth iteration of the exchange algorithm, we find maxima occurring simultaneously on points already in the reference. This means we've found the best approximation, and more iterations won't improve this approximation. If you're curious as to what polynomial we've arrived at, we have the best minimax approximation from p2 to f of x equals e to the minus x times sine pi x on the interval 0 to 1 to 3 decimal places is 0 0.73 plus 2.219x minus 2.366x squared. So how does this work? The fact that the exchange algorithm converges on the best minimax approximation centers around this inequality. Here, p star represents the best approximation. p represents a particular polynomial, for example, p1, the polynomial from the first iteration in our previous example, and h represents the error at the reference points of p. We can see this inequality in the error functions of p1 and p star, labelled e1 and e star respectively. What happens is that the polynomial p1 is the best approximation at those reference points, which is why the absolute value of h is so small, but the polynomial deviates a lot from f outside of the reference. In this case, at x equals 1, we see a large error for p1. When we exchange this point of maximum error for a point in the reference, we're forcing the maximum error to be reduced. And so with each iteration, the absolute value of h increases as we choose a more appropriate reference, but the error, the infinity norm of f minus p, decreases on average as p converges to the best minimax approximation. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.